guys, Jonah Vale here, and let me guess, you found Eternal. Welcome. Welcome to the crew, the squad. Um, there's not a ton of information out there in regards to, you know, explaining the skills and stuff like that, so I thought I would take some time and break down some of the skills. It's just kind of like an opener. Also, as a side note, if you're doing this tutorial and you find it a little arduous, I understand you only have to do the red one, though. So after that, you don't really need to do the rest of the tutorial. I would recommend doing it, but I think it's on their list of things to fix. In any case, let's get into the skills. Um, I'm going to be a little brief. I'm probably going to miss something. I'm probably going to mess something up. If you don't know who I am by now, that's kind of what I do. I fuck things up. So in any case, I'm going to give it my best shot. So we're going to go over just the skills first that aren't battle skills, and then I'll do the battle skills. Um, actually, you know what? Well, no. we'll do it live! Fuck it! I'm going to do the battle skills first, and then I'll do the other skills, just because the battle skills are going to be a little more prevalent. Um, so we're going to start with quick draw. Okay? So this is the keyword quick draw. A lot of minions have this. It interacts a, a little bit interesting interestingly with uh, deadly so I'll explain that as well quick draw basically means if this gets blocked by another unit that has two health it kills that unit and then no damage is dealt back to this unit okay so a 10 to a 35 and 2 if it blocks this this is going to kill it and not take any damage so it deals its damage first I know there's other games, Magic and Hearthstone, where the, the word is different. I, I, I haven't played those games in forever, so I can't do that comparison for you. Um, the next skill is Deadly. Okay, The reason I do these two is in a, a very, very important reason. Um, deadly means that this only has to deal one point of damage to kill something. Okay, So if you have something that's Deadly and Quick Draw like Ashara. What does that mean? So if she attacks, she only needs to deal one point of damage to kill the blocker and have no damage dealt back to her. So in order for Ashara to be blocked, there would need to be seven units and the last one would need to be able to deal three damage to her to kill it. I know that sounds crazy. It sounds like a lot. There's not a lot of deadly quick draw. It doesn't happen too, too often. There's a couple units that have it. Um, but there's tons of removal in the game, so it's not as crazy as it seems. But the first time this happens in a game, you're probably going to be like, wait, what? But it makes sense. Um, so deadly quick draw, very strong when combined with each other. Uh, the third battle skill, overwhelm. Okay. Overwhelm means that if this is blocked by a unit, um, and say say this Pyro Knight is blocked by a 1-1, one, one, okay? That means this is going to die, and then the one extra point of damage from the attack will carry over onto the other player, onto their face, okay? Now, there's some interesting interactions with that, uh, a couple things. Say you have something that has Overwhelm and Infiltrate on it, okay? I'll get into Infiltrate later, um, but Infiltrate means that if you deal damage to the player, X happens. So if you have Overwhelm and Infiltrate, you can Overwhelm the damage onto the player and proc your Infiltrate, right? Very interesting, very cool stuff happens with that. On a side note, uh, with Overwhelm, I'm going to state this, as a lot of people don't know this, this is a Relic weapon. A Relic weapon is equipped to your hero. Um, so it's a 6-3 and it has Overwhelm and you equip it to your hero. What they don't really explain too much is that this actually gives Overwhelm to your spells while this is equipped. So if you have this equipped and you cast a torch on a 1 health minion, 2 damage is going to carry over onto the other player. So definitely some interesting interactions with that. There's also a legendary that has deadly when you equip it and it makes all your spells deadly too. <laughs> <laughs> to minions, which is awesome. Um, it's called the last word, if you're curious, by the way. The next battle skill. Charge. Uh, charge is pretty, pretty basic. Basically, can attack the turn it's summoned. Uh, so the turn it comes into play, it can attack. Uh, don't need a lot of explaining for that. 
Warcry, one of my favorite mechanics in the game. <coughs> anyway, Warcry means that when this unit attacks, the next unit or weapon in the deck gets plus one, plus one. Now, that might not seem crazy, it might seem kind of cool. This can, it doesn't need to deal damage for this, it just needs to attack. If it's blocked, it doesn't matter, the Warcry goes through. The Warcries can stack. I've had war cries stack on ornamental daggers up to 10 tens and there's two of them because they have echo and it gets crazy so war cry is a very strong mechanic it's primarily played in Ricano, uh, which is the mixture of green and red factions um, and it it's definitely an interesting mechanic and it has a lot of crazy things that happen because of it so um, if you don't value war cry you probably should because it's got a ton of potential on it the next skill, battle skill, Aegis, okay? There's some spells for it. Protected from one enemy spell or effect, but not from battle damage. So Aegis only, only protects from spells, okay? It doesn't protect from any attacking, any unit damage, anything like that. It will protect from summon effects. Like, so if you summon a Black Sky Harbinger, which deals one damage, to all the other enemy minions, and they all have Aegis, they'll all block that one damage. Um, Aegis also has some interesting interactions. We have a board wipe in the game called Harsh Rule, it's just kill all units. Um, so if they have Aegis, it'll block the Harsh Rule. If you have Aegis, it will not block the Harsh Rule, because Aegis protects from one enemy spell or effect. It does not protect you from your own spells. Um, on that same note, someone can pop your Aegis with uh, potentially non-damaging spells, such as Levitate, which is give a unit flying. So a lot of interesting interactions with that, where you can break their Aegis, and, and so on and so forth. Next battle skill. Flying. Haha. <laughs> yes. Kaka! So anyway. Flying is amazing in this game. Uh, reason being... Think of the board as in two planes. There's one on the ground, one in the sky. Um, fly, the only thing that can block flying units are flying units. So a lot of games are decided by a flying unit coming over the top of uh, you know a landlocked board and just plinking away. Um, so especially in draft, flying units are heavily prioritized. Um, I do recommend. I mean, if you don't, if you run a deck without flyers, you're running a huge risk in draft. I mean, is it possible you can win? Definitely, but uh, you know, if you ever get into a board stall or anything like that when you're playing a very aggressive ground deck, um, you, you could very easily lose to just a two-two flyer. You know, very very easily. The next skill, life steal. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, whenever it deals. Uh, point of damage you gain that much health so this bird if you put a weapon on it's a 4-4 swings for four hits either a unit or the player gives you four health back i don't think i need to explain that too much i think it's pretty obvious killer another super interesting uh, mechanic so killer basically these units come with killer on it this can give units killer um, killer means that uh, if you're if you come from Hearthstone, you know how you can just attack any unit on the board. Killer's like Hearthstone for one turn. So if I summon this, it's a six six with killer. I can exhaust it, so it can't do anything else that turn or the next turn. Um, but then I can do six damage to another unit on the board. It's still it's not like you're negating damage to yourself though. So if I use this on another predatory carnosaur or another six six, they would just kill each other, right? The interesting thing though is that if you have a unit with killer, you give a unit killer, there are effects that bounce a card back into your hand. So you can go in, killer, bounce the card back to your hand, put it back in play, killer happens again, or you have the chance to use it again. Or it can go in your void, your graveyard, whatever you want to call it, bring it back to your hand, and killer is reset again. So a very, very strong ability, very prioritized in draft if you can get it. I mean, you're not going to run a ton of these, but these cards are all very high picks and draft for that specific reason. A lot of value out of these cards. Next skill. Endurance. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know about this card, you're going to learn today. So, anyway. Um, endurance basically just means that they can attack 
and then they're not exhausted the next turn to defend. Okay? Um, it also means they cannot be stunned or exhausted. So, when it says they can't be stunned or exhausted, it's not entirely true. They, they can't be stunned at any point. Okay, that's correct. But, say I attack with some unit, just a 1 1, and he blocks with his Sandstorm Titan, okay? It is exhausted during my turn after that block. So after that block, it is exhausted for my turn. But normally exhaustion lasts one turn after that. So that might be a little confusing. Because if you're running something like Execute, kill an exhausted enemy unit and deal two damage to the enemy player, there's a lot of plays where you're going to be like, I'm going to throw this minion into that Endurance unit, he's going to block it, and then I'm going to execute it on my turn. So this is something very important to consider. Very, very important. Um, so just because it says it can't be exhausted, it doesn't mean it can't be exhausted during your turn after a block. So you want to keep that in mind. Unblockable. Do I even need to explain this? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. So, cannot be blocked. That That's it, guys. <laughs> very, very, very obvious. There's, I mean, this is a really good card in drafts because you could just put a weapon on this and just keep swinging away and they can't block it. They need hard removal for it. I don't feel like I need to go into that too, too much. Double damage. Another hugely prioritized thing in draft, if you're able to get it. These cards are just massive win cons because it's a flyer with double damage. So, it's a 1 2, it does double damage. So, as it is right now with this, it does 2 points of damage. Okay? But, if you put a weapon on it, it's double damage. So, if I put like an Ornate Katana, which is 2 attack, so it has it's a 3 2, it's doing 6 points of damage. So double damage can quickly get out of control and can very easily just win a game. Um, obviously more so in draft where there's less removal. Uh, but regardless of all that, double damage is a crazy battle skill. So those are all the battle skills. And the reason I want to do the battle skills first is for this card. So when you play a unit, Hero of the People gains its battle skills Hero of the People gets plus one, plus one for each of her battle skills. So, something important to note with her is that all those skills I just listed will give her plus one, plus one, and that battle skill. So I just wanted to make that distinction now, so if you ever see this card, it's a little bit easier to understand what buffs her and what doesn't. Okay. And now we'll go over the other skills that are not considered battle skills. Power Surge. So... Power Surge basically means that whenever you play this, it uses up all of your power at that given time. Okay? So, if you have 10 power available, this becomes a 10-10. Now, something that's interesting about Power Surge, um, especially on a weapon and uh, a unit, is that if you, say, Dark Return this or bounce it back to your hand and you drop it again, it keeps its stats from the first time and then uses your power again and adds it on top. That's why the deck Zen and Killers, which is Shadow and Time, is very popular because there's great interactions between, you know, your Copper Conduit dying and bringing it back and making just this giant Copper Conduit with Killer on it, and it, it, it's very strong. So, Power Surge is enormously powerful. This is one of the most prioritized cards in draft. These other two are very closely behind it. Summon effects. Now, the, the range of summon effects are just, you know insane uh they're just insane so and also i, I might have misexplained this power surge means that it uses whatever power you have available but his summon effect is that he gets attack and health equal to the power surge so that that that's separate for him there's only three power surges in the game though but so maybe i misexplained that um summon effects mean that whenever you put the unit in play x happens okay there are no counter to summon effects like you can't cast a fast spell in response to a unit so you know whenever you summon a unit this is gonna happen it's just whatever it is is gonna happen there's no real way to counter it um, even if they kill the unit the summon effect is still gonna go off I mean you can obviously Aegis your own units if it's an, uh, an, a summon effect that's gonna hit them but that's really it okay 
And there's just a ton of different summon effects, so I'm not going to go over all of them. That'd just be crazy. Ultimates. Ultimates can be paid for one time while the unit is in play to do X. So pay six, six power, to give Pyronite plus four, plus four. So it becomes a, a six, five, okay? Again, as I mentioned with Copper Conduit, if you bounce this card into your hand or it goes in the grave and you bring it back to your hand and play it again, you can put this in play and then your ultimate is available again. So you can stack your ultimates after bringing it back into play. This is something very important. Um, other Because you can only do your ultimate once unless you put it back in your hand. So there's a lot of cool interactions with that. Um, and then we'll go to Entomb Effects. Very basic. Whenever the card goes in your void, X happens. Okay. Something to note, though, is that there is one card in the game. Well, there's two cards. That silences units when they go in the void. So, if Deadly Steward is in play on the opposing team and you're looking to trigger an Entomb effect, it's not going to happen. Because your unit's getting silenced before it goes into the void, or as it goes into the void. The other card that'll do that exact same thing... is Statuary Maiden, okay? Enemy units that die transform into 2-2 two, two Cudgels, you draw them. So n your, none of your Entomb effects are going to happen if either of those cards are in play, so that's something you need to consider. Um, and another thing to note about Entomb effects, especially this one, is that a lot of people will have this card in game and they'll say, oh, I'm gonna, this card's going to die, but then I'll get the health and I'll live. That's not how it works. Battle damage is dealt simultaneously, and tomb effects happen after, okay? So if you die on a, on a swing, and then you're hoping an Umber Reaper is going to save you, you're shit out of luck, because he's not going to help you. He's going to watch you die and say, go fuck yourself. So learning that interaction early is a good thing. That's why I figured I would bring it up. Next skill. Reckless. Usually a hindrance on units. Um... It means they have to attack every turn. There's no way around that unless you silence your own unit or it gets silenced. So if you play this, it has to attack every turn it's able to attack. Obviously not the first turn because it has summoning sickness, whatever you want to call it. Um, but every turn after that, these things have got to attack. Infiltrate, one of my favorite skills. So infiltrate means that if this unit does damage to the other player's base, X happens, okay? A lot of interesting interactions with that. Um, some interactions that might not be so obvious is that, say, let's go to this card, okay? I can't spell. Argonfort, Dar. okay. When a unit dies, deal one damage to its owner, okay? Argonport Instigator is dealing that damage. So if you have Argonport Instigator and you put a piece of equipment that has an infiltrate effect on it, like this. If it infiltrates, play a 5-5 beast, and you have this on Argonport, and a unit dies on the other opponent's team, guess what? Your Argonport dealt damage to their face, and you just summoned a 5-5 beast. No problem. Very cool interactions. I've seen it used a lot. Um, as I explained earlier, the overwhelm, proccing infiltrate, the exact same thing. Um, and again, with infiltrate, it can only happen once, unless you die and you bring it back, or it dies and you bring it back, or you bounce it to your hand and play it again, and then do the infiltrate again. Uh, next, ambush. Ambush basically means that you can play this card in response to an enemy attack or at the end of their turn, okay? Now, this isn't just unit attacks, this is also relic weapon attacks. So you can play an ambush in response to a relic weapon attack. Okay, something very important to consider. Fate. Fate is pretty simple. It means that if you draw this, X happens. So whenever you draw a Lumen Shepherd, a 1-1 one, one Wisp goes into play. Another cool combo is Static Bolt. So when you draw this, it increases the damage of all Static Bolts in your hand and deck by 1. So as soon as you draw a Static Bolt, it does all your Static Bolts do 2 damage. Now if you do some combinations where you draw cards and put them back on the deck and redraw them, the static bolt keeps stacking up. It's actually been a win con in very many decks. It's a little janky, but 
it's very cool it's very prioritized in draft if you can get a bunch of them you can just tear the other person's face off um, fate effects are very very strong all these cards are considered very good um, in draft for the most part this card however might be a little too heavy but still good and then destiny probably one of the strongest abilities in the game um, destiny means that whenever you draw like for this your time units have destiny that also means that units that have mixed influence with time get drawn as well so while this is in play if you draw a time unit it goes immediately into play and then you draw another card so if you drew five units with time influence in a row they would all go into play that turn without summoning cost and then until you draw the non-unit it would just continue okay so that's a super that's probably the strongest ability in the game luckily it's only on two cards really um, and this this card but this isn't really it's different this cancels out stuff and gives you frogs with destiny um, and then we have one of the other most interesting mechanics in the game echo whenever this is drawn you get an additional copy so um, say you draw your ornamental daggers you play one on a unit so you have another set of ornamental daggers in your hand and then you put you do something to put the ornamental daggers back on your deck the other one then you draw it you get another copy you can pretty much duplicate things there's decks built around echo um, echo is very strong in draft you're getting two copies of cards especially with small decks um, echo is just a phenomenal mechanic and there's just a ton of fun stuff you can do with it uh, a lot of cool interactions i won't go too too deep into it but you guys will get it and then empower empower means that whenever you play a power or anything that gives you a power x happens so another bomb is Pillar of Amar. Basically, uh, you know, if you have him in play, every turn you play a power, you summon a 5-5, which is just huge, right? That's massive. Um, a ton of cards with Empower are very strong, and Power is just known as a very, very strong skill. Obviously, it's dependent on you drawing that stuff, but it doesn't change the fact that a lot of these abilities are just absolutely crazy. With, like, this just builds up every time you play a power. It's, it's insane. These cards are all very priority picks in draft. So that was the breakdown of all the skills, guys. I don't want to make it too, too long. I'm going to do some more tutorials in the future. Um, kind of just, I've seen people asking these questions. I didn't feel like there was enough information out there just for people just getting into the game. Um, as usual, if you like the content, uh, if you want to come check out the game on my Twitch and, and talk to the chat, everyone there is super helpful. So if you have any questions at all, I'll put a link below in the comments. Um, and again, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the game. I've been playing it nonstop, and, and I, I just can't stop playing it. It's it's absolutely insane how addicting this game is. So hopefully uh, your wife and kids are okay on their own, um, or your husband and kids are okay on their own, because uh, you're done now. That's all I can say. You're done. So anyway, guys, that's it for me. Jonah Vale out, and I'll see you soon.